How's it going everyone? I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to build out this star ranking system that I'm sure you've seen in multiple different sites where basically a user can come in, rate a product, five star, one star, whatever. And you might save that to a database and not allow them to rate it anymore. Um, this one is a great learning experience if you're looking to just see how you can do different things with CSS. Like most of this is all done in CSS. And then the logic of when I click on a star is done in JavaScript. But you can see here, as I click on the star, it tells me which one I clicked. And then finally, we disable the star so you can no longer click on the stars if you already voted. And then like always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe because it helps my channel grow. All right, let's just go ahead and dive into this. All right, so to get started with building out this little rating system with stars, I would first make a div and give it like a class of stars. And inside of that div, we can start putting some star emojis. So over here, I Googled a star emoji. I'm gonna copy this. And I'm going to go ahead and just make uh, five A tags with those stars. And those should show up here. And so that looks uh, pretty good, right? That's kind of what we're going for. We want stars that people can click on them. And so to make it so when you hover over the stars and they kind of change opacity, we need to make them all be like kind of grayed out by default. So let's go to our style sheet and I can say stars of A. And then I'm going to give a default opacity of like 50%. And that will make them all look a little bit grayed out. Now, additionally, um, it'd be nice if when we hovered over the star, we had like a pointer. So I'm going to say cursor is pointer. So people know that they can actually click on them to vote. But the idea is that we want to make it so when you hover over one of the stars, it kind of makes all the stars to the left of the current star and the current star itself fully um, opaque, I guess you could say. So I'm going to say stars. When you hover over the stars div, I'm going to target the A and just say opacity is 100%. So that'll make it so basically if I hover over the parent container at all, it's gonna make all the stars 100%. But what I need to do is basically set that particular star that we hovered, so I can say star of A hover is going to be 100%, which isn't gonna change anything, but what we also wanna do is do a, a tilde sign. Okay, so I can make that 50%. So I believe this is just saying get all the links after the current one I have hovered and set the opacity to 50. So you can see here, if I hover on this one, the two stars to the right become opacity of 50, stuff like that. So there's this one little bug where like there's spacing in between these stars. And let's see if I can show you that. Yeah, there's like a little bit of spacing between these. I don't know if there's like margin or something. Um, but one quick fix I could probably do is on the stars class, I could say display of flex. And that should kind of make them be really close together. And we want to add some padding to the stars. So on this class, I would recommend just adding like 10 pixels of padding or something. Just so it kind of, okay, maybe that's too much. Try five. Okay, that's too much too. Try three. I'm really zoomed in. So like one pixel of padding looks like a ton. So yeah, let's, I think three pixels looks pretty good. And that's about how you do it. Now, I wanted to take it a step further and show you how to actually like listen to when someone clicks on a star. So let's move over to our JavaScript, which is this one. So basically what you want to do is you want to listen to when any of the star link elements are clicked. So I can say document query selector all, which one's the all one. And I can say listen to whenever a stars link is clicked. And I'll say that could be our stars. So this will give back a like a node list of stars and we can simply loop through them. So I can say stars of for each. And we want to, for each star in that node list, we want to loop through and get the star element in the index. And what we want to do is basically add a click listener to all of those stars. So I can say star to add event listener, give it a click. And I could just console log the index. So in this case, I could say, I don't know, using like string interpolation, I could say star of index IDX was clicked. All right, so now if I click on them, notice that it prints out star of four was clicked, star of zero was clicked, and you could also like add one to this if that makes it easier for you to understand or something. But as you can see, as you click the stars, it's printing out which one was clicked. And if you're interested in taking this a step further, which I definitely recommend you do if you want to kind of practice your JavaScript skills, is you probably, if you have a backend that accepts some type of rating system, you want to probably do like a post request here and send the index of the star that you clicked so that you can actually store the information for the user and other people can see 
how the stars or how this product was rated, right? So post to back in your star ranking. Um, and then also you probably want to, once you click on the star, you probably want to make all the stars leading up to the star you clicked on actually like liked it. So maybe we can do that really quick. Let's just add a stars of a dot active and we can say opacity is 100% here. And then whenever you click on one, you could basically you could basically take all the stars and just add like an active class to it. So in this case, click on a star, we're going to do another for each loop. So I get a star for each. Uh, we don't really care about that star. But I'm going to say other index. And we could just say if the other index is less than or equal to the current index we clicked. This is like the clicked index. So let me rename this the clicked index so that we can use it and not be so confused. And we could just add that class to, uh, let me actually, instead of underscore, let's actually name this like um, other stars, other star. So if the other star index is less than or current to the clicked index, we can say other star dot class list dot add active. And then we probably also want to like disable the ability to hover, but we can do that in a second. So if I click on this one, notice that as I move my mouse away, they all stay active. And unfortunately, when I hover over them, it doesn't work anymore. So, so I think a quick fix for that is we could probably put like a mouse disabled on the entire stars thing. So you can no longer do like hover events on them. Let's try doing that. Let's just grab the star wrapper here. So I'll just do a query selector, grab the star element, and I'm going to basically just say star dot add uh, actually class list dot add disabled. And so when you click on it, let's look at this. Click on this one, you'll notice that we get disabled attached to uh oh. Let me rename this as star wrapper. Be very careful when you're naming variables, make sure you don't overwrite a higher level scope variable or else you get issues like I just did. So let's try this. We'll click on the second star and notice that disable gets put on this. And what we could do is we could basically style stars, like I say stars of disabled. Oops. And I could say, I think it's like mouse events. I might have to look at this up. Um, disable mouse events CSS pointer events. The pointer events, I think I could say none, or is it disabled? Let's try none. All right, let's try this. I'll click on the third one. And now notice I can't click or hover over anything because the CSS is preventing any type of events from firing inside of our JavaScript. So now the user has clicked on a three star rating and that is going to be stuck there until you reload the page, which hopefully if you load the page, you get some data from the back and you know that the user already voted on that product. And you can just add the disabled class to your stars and they can't actually vote on it again. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is kind of clean up this opacity. You notice how we have 50% kind of hard coded in two different places. I want to put that into a CSS variable. So I'm going to look that up because I don't remember off the top of my head. But it's basically you just define the variable at the root component or the root element. And I can say like this is going to be opacity. And I'm going to set this to 50%. And then wherever you want to use it inside your CSS, I can say var of hyphen hyphen opacity. And then that will basically put that 50% value inside of those two opacity values. So let me know if there's a better way to do this, if you can think of a better solution. This is just a quick hack solution that works. Um, and if I didn't have, if I had like ESLint set up, it probably would have yelled at me that I had star kind of declared a, a higher level and I wouldn't have ran into that issue. But yeah, I would say take this a step further, try to build out a backend to actually accept these star ratings and make sure that the user can't post multiple times to your product because you don't want them to vote 10 times and give it a five star, right? So make sure your backend actually tracks your users by your, I don't know, IP address or just if you have a username and make, make it like a an authenticated endpoint where they need to be signed up, be able to vote, and then make sure you don't allow them to do multiple votes on a product. All right, well, I hope that helped you learn a little bit. We covered um, how to build out the star rating system, how to make them change styling as you hover over them. We did a little bit of JavaScript just to show you how you can click on the star and have it print out something to the console and maybe uh, pave the way for what you might wanna do if you have a backend. And then additionally, how to disable all these. 
For the styling, I showed you a couple of new things. I showed you how to add a CSS variable so that I can put the same opacity value in multiple locations. And you can call it like this. And then additionally, there's this tilde operator, which basically says, give me all the elements that are also links after the one I currently have hovered. All right, so this is how if I were to hover this one, that's how it gives me the three stars to the right. I really hope this helped you out. If you enjoy this video, be sure to like it because it helps my channel grow. Also, leave me a comment if you want to see how you can build a different type of widget using vanilla CSS, vanilla JavaScript, and HTML. And like always, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button because I'm going to be posting videos like this in the future, which could help you learn how to become a better web developer.